Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. So I want to talk about the whole situation going on between Drea Michelle versus her ex-boyfriend, Tyroy Taylor. Some of you may know Drea Michelle from Basketball Wives, the reality TV show. I used to be into it, but I kind of fell off a little bit. All right now, so getting back to the whole story, she is suing Tyroy Taylor for breach of contract. You see, he wants to evict her. She bought this house from him for $3.2 million. She made repairs of $300,000 which was supposed to go towards the purchase price of the home. They made this agreement while they were still dating. It was verbal. They did do have a written contract. The only thing is neither one of them signed it, right? Now it doesn't say to me, why is it that he wants to evict her? I know that she's now in a different relationship with someone else, so I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it or if it's something else, right? So that is the big piece that's missing. I've been waiting to hear more information about this, but unfortunately, nothing has really come forward. When it does, then I may follow up and give you guys a little bit more tea. However, I want us to sit back and learn from this whole situation right here, right? First of all, I'm not a big fan of verbal contracts. They're not always easy to prove in court. Now, no, I'm not a lawyer, even though I have worked for the same law firm for 25 years, but if you wanna add up all the law firms that I've worked at, then we're looking at 30 years altogether, right? Okay, now, and then of course, I'm just giving my opinion. There's really no guarantee how a case is going to go or how it's gonna come out uh, because a lot of times the evidence that is presented in court is not always presented to the public. All of us have different backgrounds, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I'm just giving my opinion based on my experience. Okay. So yeah, I'm not all, the, I'm not too big on verbal contracts. Uh, and most lawyers that I know, they're not all that crazy about them either. However, yes, they can still be enforceable for a num in a number of ways. Number one, was somebody else in the room or in the, the immediate vicinity that heard the verbal contract, that heard what was said to whom, okay? It may have some validity when that is the case, all right? The fact that also, the fact that they have that written contract, the fact that it was even written out, even though ne neither one of them signed it, that might also help Drea's side, may help Drea's case. Another thing that may help are recordings. Was, first of all, in most places, you can't record unless both parties know that they're being recorded. All right, so let's, let's begin with that right there. But as you know, sometimes people uh, speak to each other on Zoom. And Zoom allows you to record a conversation, but it also normally says, you know, this meeting is being recorded, right? So if she has that, or even if he has that, then that can be submissible in court to back her up. Next, was an invoice ever get given? Or did she just say, okay, yeah, I'll give you $3.2 million. I'll pay the mortgage every month or what have you. 
did she just say that or did he ever give her like an invoice stating that whatever amount monthly amount they agreed to was towards the purchase of the home was that done we don't know all right also on the checks that she wrote to him did she put down in the note area in that subject area did she put down that this was the mortgage towards the house at any point in time or this was the down payment towards the house did she put that down at any time you see this is very important uh, are there any receipts especially since she said that she spent three hundred thousand dollars in repairs I hope she kept the receipts to prove that and not just making up a number and just pushing it out there like that. You know, receipts shouldn't really be too hard unless you paid somebody under the table. And even still, it should be on your, you know, your credit card statements or even your banking statements if you paid by check. If you paid by cash, hopefully you got an invoice from that person right now uh, the other thing is text and emails text and emails matter as a matter of fact text and emails in many cases are also considered contracts a lot of people don't know that that's why it's ve be very cautious in deleting various texts from individuals especially texts in which you've done business with a person you want to keep those you don't want to get rid of them now when it comes to emails does she have any emails or are there any emails to prove to say that you were buying this property from this person that you weren't just renting it even though it sounds like this is a rent to own type of situation going on right here right and it sounds like it's a lease purchase situation because a lease purchase is when the person who owns the home they they are rent to own to you but if you do something that they don't particularly agree with like you don't you haven't paid in a number of months and normally that's three months that's normally when they can file for eviction. One month to three months is normally how that goes. They can also evict you for non-payment of rent in case you've done something like you violated the lease, but the agreement that they had, neither one of them signed it. So they're in lies the issue right there uh the the other thing with emails that i wanted to point out that's good to do in case you do have an oral agreement with someone is and i learned this from my manager whenever she has a conversation with any one of us what she does is after the conversation is over, she sends us an email. And in the email, she says, as per our conversation that we had on such and such a date at such and such a time, we discussed A, B, and C so that X, Y, and Z could be carried on. In addition, there's a return receipt. So that this way she knows that you actually opened up the email and read it so that's what you can do if you verbally had a conversation with someone and money was exchanged but there was no written contract if you have an email you can send out an email saying uh, that we agreed that this amount of money was towards the purchase of this house, that uh, a certain amount 
was for the mortgage and then whatever I made as far as repairs would go towards the home. If you put that in an email and then do a return receipt, because you don't want to have that email, send it out, and then they go before the judge and they turn around and say to you, well, I didn't get it. No, you got a return receipt to prove that they actually opened that email. Okay, so that is something that's very important. I don't know if she did that. But if you find yourself in the same situation that Drea is in, I hope this is something that you do. Okay, so guys, I'm, I might be following this a little bit more up as soon as more information is presented. That is, if it gets presented, because like I said, his side is missing. I don't know specifically why he wants to evict her. I don't know if it's because she missed payments. I don't know if it's because uh, she violated the lease, even though the lease was never signed. I don't know if she disturbed the peace, uh, you know. So because of this, because so much information has been left out, it kind of leads me at a standstill. But the reason why I wanted to go forward and make this video is because I wanted to express to you guys that, listen, when it comes to exchanging money, especially in this case, $3.2 million, we need to have a written contract. This verbal stuff got to stop. This verbal stuff got to stop. Okay, guys. So anyway, hopefully that's all I got for you. Hopefully what I shared will help you make smart financial moves. Feel free to pass this amongst your friends. Remember, each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.